Good morning, family. Good morning, church. I believe you all are doing well this morning. Uh, from the Word of God and the Bible, as it teaches us, we know that God and His Word, they are one. And before God sends His blessing, He sends His Word. And this morning, let us prepare our heart to hear His Word. The sermon title for this morning is, look up to your screen. Yes, the battle is the Lord's. Yes, the battle is the Lord's. You know, people what have understood that we all have battles that we, are, that we face in our lives. And every one of us are facing a battle, maybe a private battle, which most don't know of it. In fact, in Joshua chapter 6, we see God help Israel have victory. And we know through the scriptures that God always goes before us in all our battles, for He fights for us. So, are you then wearing yourself out, trying to battle your battles on your own? So are you then try, uh, wearing yourself out, trying to battle your battles on your own? Because God's battle plan looks nothing like man's. Why do I say so? Because Isaiah chapter 55 says, His ways are higher than ours. Yes, His ways are much higher than ours. In the old covenant, they fought physical enemies. Yes, in the old covenant, they fought the physical enemies. But we in the new covenant are fighting spiritual enemies. In the old covenant, it was all about the promised land. But in the new covenant, it is all about the promised life. Yes, it's all about the promised life. And God has given us spiritual armor to fight. Yes, but if the battle belongs to the Lord, yes, if the battle belongs to the Lord, then how do we fight? Yes, if the battle belongs to the Lord, then how do we fight? I believe today's word will help us answer that question. So let's journey together this morning. Just to give us a background as to what exactly is happening here. You know, Israel is at the doorstep of entering into Canaan. The stage was set and the land was ripe for conquest. The people of Israel had been without a homeland for 400 years. You know, they wander, wandered aimlessly in the desert for over 40 years, yet they remained faithful. Though imperfectly, yes, but that they remained faithful to the one true God and clung to His promise, which God made to their forefathers Abraham centuries before. What was that? That is to make Abraham and his descendants into a great nation and to give them Canaan as a homeland. But on one condition, that they remain faithful and obedient to Him. Now, people, what's happening here? Now they are at the threshold of experiencing the fulfillment of the promise. They are at the threshold of entering into the fulfillment of the promise. And church, I want us all to know that we have not failed to receive the promises from God. We have definitely not failed to receive the promises from God. But certainly, certainly we have failed to see the fulfillment of the promises of God in our lives. There may have been delays, people, for various reasons, but it's not denial from God. Delays are not denial from God. And we don't necessarily need one more promise, but rather we need to see the fulfillment of the promises which God has already spoken into our lives. I understand that we need the help of the Holy Spirit in our lives. For the work of the Holy Spirit is continual and mutual. And without Him, we, can, uh, without him, we cannot. And without us, He will not. So without Him, we cannot. And without us, He will not. So my beloved, cooperation, cooperation with the Holy Spirit is the very essential to victory. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit of God empowers us to fulfill our calling and to complete the task at hand. By the way, the work of the Holy Spirit as we are talking this morning is supernatural. Why do I say so that the work of the Holy Spirit is supernatural? Because, because the fall of the Jericho wall is the very evidence. Yes, the fall of the Jericho wall is the very evidence. You know, today I see and hear many people talk about the supernaturals. Or I hear people preach about supernaturals. But I, I want us all to know that God's natural is our supernatural. God's natural is our supernatural. And we see here that the Lord calls Joshua to prepare the people for the journey ahead. Yes, God is calling Joshua to prepare the people for the journey ahead. And he reminds them of the promises he gave to Moses. I want to take this time to tell us, remember people, preparation is always the key. 
Yes, preparation is always the key and many people don't like the process of preparation. I want to let us know that greater the task, greater the encouragement. Greater the task, greater the encouragement. For encouragement births courage. Yes, encouragement, encouragement births courage. What was the promise of God to Joshua? Let's read Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Joshua 1, verses 1 to 3. You know, the Bible says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over to Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. And he says, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. Now what I've come to understand, people, when God leads, there is only one way to go. That is the way forward. Amen. When God's lead, there is only one way to go, the way forward. I love this man of God. I love his sayings and his quote. Look up to your screen. That is Martin Luther King Jr. He says, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. And if you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Let me say it again. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. And if you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward, people. Know this very well, and if you're taking down notes, write it down in your notes, that God's vision given to God's man for God's people creates God's opportunity. Yes, God's vision given to God's man for God's people creates God's opportunity. When you look at the scenario there, what is, what's happening? This was a difficult period for the people of Israel. And the challenges Joshua, the leader, is facing and the mammoth task ahead of him. Let's read Joshua chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Joshua 3, 3 and 4. What is the word of God saying? It says, And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priest, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know that by way which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. The verse 3 is talking about the Ark of the Covenant. You know, the Ark of the Covenant symbolizes the very presence of God. In other words, let the presence of God lead you as you step out. Yes, let the presence of God lead you as you step out. Moses, the great leader that he was, he, he was entirely dependent upon God and his presence. In fact, Moses said, Lord, if your presence doesn't go, then I do not want to go. Because there is no victory without you, God. That is what Moses understood. And we see here this morning that the Lord is saying something wonderful. Hey, Joshua, get ready and get the people ready. Hey, Joshua, get up, get ready and get the people ready. Yes. Look up to your screen for the next slide. The word of God says, For you have not passed this way before. Hey Joshua, get ready. Get the people ready for you have not passed this way before. Because these are the words of God Almighty that keep coming back to us as a constant reminder of His goodness and His promise for us specifically as Fan Church. So let's position ourselves for greater victories and breakthroughs. Yes, see, fan, position yourself for greater victories and breakthroughs. For we have not passed this way before and God is marshalling us, his army. But look at this wonderful verse that the Lord speaks to Joshua. Joshua chapter 3 verse 7. Joshua 3 verse 7. And the Lord said to Joshua, This day... Yes, this day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. This day, what a comforting promise, people. What an assurance from the Lord. But, but the Jordan stood between them and the way to the promised land. Jordan stood between them and the way to the promised land. You know, people, and at the Jordan, they remembered the Red Sea. At the Jordan, they remembered the Red Sea. Look up to your screen for this image, just to help our imagination. Yes, they remembered the Red Sea. At the Jordan, how God parted the Red Sea and the Israelites walked on dry land. 
but that wasn't to be here for a God works in a, uh, in a different way, in a most unique way. Let's read Joshua 3, 12 and 13. What is the Lord telling them? Joshua 3, 12 and 13. And this is what the Lord says. Now therefore take for yourself 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one man from every tribe, and it shall come to pass as soon as the soul of the feet of the priest to bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off. The waters that come down from upstream, they shall stand as heap. Look up to your screen for the next image. Just to help us understand what exactly is happening. The moment the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant, their soul touched the waters. I'll tell you, the, the Jordan parted. And Bible records they crossed Jordan successfully. And now Jericho stands between them and all that God has promised. First it was Jordan and now it's Jericho. Jericho stands between them and all that God has promised. And maybe now Joshua is looking over the city of Jericho, probably considering what strategy he might employ to get the victory. No, that this is the Lord's battle. Yes, this is the Lord's battle. It's not between the Israel and Jericho, but it's between Jehovah God and the false God of Jericho. And you know people, our God is a mighty warrior and our God has a plan. And we will be victorious. Yes, we will only be victorious in our spiritual battles if we acknowledge Jesus as a commander-in-chief and just follow his plans and strategy. You know, from the very beginning, the promised land was a gift from the Lord. Yes, from the very beginning, the promised land was a gift from the Lord. And the Lord doesn't promise that our battles will be easy. Listen, listen, listen carefully. Somebody needs to listen this morning. Uh, the Lord does not promise that our battles will be easy, but He does promise to be with us always and to keep His promises. And therefore, I believe one can obey God's call with confidence in His faithfulness, knowing He is there for us. But for Joshua, he had his work cut out for him. He had his work cut out for him. In fact, Jericho was Joshua's first real battle since his appointment as the leader of the next generation of the Israelites. And now Joshua was up against a wall, literally, literally a wall. And people, as long as the gates were shut, no battle was possible. Yes, and as long as the gates were shut, no battle was absolutely possible. So then what should he command his army to do? What should he command his army to do? But we read in the word of God, the Lord promised Joshua before it happened. Yes, the Lord had promised Joshua before it happened. And it's recorded in Joshua chapter 6, verse 2. Joshua 6, verse 2. This is the very words of the Lord. It says, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. Yes, I have delivered Jericho into your hand, Joshua. You know, people, interesting fact, Joshua won the fight without any of the king's horses and all of king's men. If you look into the story, which we very well know, you know, Israel's strategy was laughable and irrational. Why do I say so? Because they did not carry swords or spears, but trumpets and horns into their hands. And the plan did little to intimidate or frighten or panic the enemies from the very beginning. You know, the long roundabout march was inspiring and belittling to the untrained eyes of the godless mind. I want us all to look up to the screen. Yes, this is just to help us what exactly happened that time. You know, marching around the Jericho walls. Just imagine, imagine just marching around the Jericho walls. It looked ridiculous, people. Just marching around, it was crazy, but was indeed a walk of faith. It looked crazy to the physical eyes, it looked ridiculous to the physical eyes, but indeed it was a walk of faith. You know, why do I say so? Because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 30, Hebrews 11 verse 30, you know, the Bible says, By faith, yes, by faith the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. And that's the confirmation that by faith the walls came down. You know why? Because these people marched around them for seven days. Look up to your screen. What happened when they marched around the walls? 
the walls came down. It was all faith, people, absolutely all faith in God's promise and his power. And I believe, church, we don't fight for victory. You know, this is a classic example, the story, the, the Jericho walls coming down. We don't fight for victory. In fact, we fight from victory. We fight from victory. And we must accept the victory that God has already promised us. Yes, and we, I believe we have been given the victory through Jesus Christ. And our victory has already been secured. Yes, he has secured our victory. Jesus has defeated the sin and death. And he, he has risen victoriously. And the victory is already ours. But humanly speaking, yes, humanly speaking, this is the most ridiculous plan of battle. You know, because the Ark of the Covenant is not a military weapon. The seven trumpets of ram's horn are not for war. The priests are definitely not soldiers. The soldiers have no strategic battle plan. Walking around the fortified city is pointless. The sound of the horns and the shout of the people are not destructive by any means. You know, this is a story of God's people emerging victorious when facing an impossible situation. You know, people, God had already promised them to give them the promised land. But the mighty walled city stood in their way. God had already promised them this promised land, but the mighty walled the city stood in their way. And unless they found a way to bring down those walls, the city could not be taken. And if the city was not taken, the promised land would never be theirs. You know, it was totally impossible to bring down those walls. It was totally, absolutely, completely and utterly impossible in human terms. Yes, Jericho stood between them and all that God has promised. Yes, Jericho stood between them and all that God had promised. Yet we read the incident that happened that God's people won a great victory that day. Yes, God's people won a great victory that day. But how did it all happen? How did it all happen? And what sort of faith was it that in fact caused the very walls to come down? You know, if you, if you read the, the history behind it, history records that the Canaanites built Jericho as a kind of a gateway fortress to the land. And any invading enemy would have to deal with the great wall city of Jericho and you couldn't simply bypass it. And even the archaeologists tell us that the city that Joshua saw actually had two walls. Yes, it had two walls, an inner wall and an outer wall. And both built on a slope, making it virtually impregnable to any attacking army. In fact, the scripture also backs it up. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 1. Deuteronomy 9, 1. What does the word of God say? The word of God says, Hear Israel, you are now about to cross the Jordan, to go in and dispose nations greater and stronger than you, with large cities that have walls up to the sky. Yes, with large cities that have walls up to the sky. Look up to your screen for this image. This is ancient Jericho. Yes, just to help us with this image, to know this is what the Israelites saw as they marched around the city each day for seven days. I want us to know this. Look at this image. You'll see this is what they saw as they marched around the city each day for seven days. And humanly speaking, it appeared to be an impregnable fortress. But in Joshua chapter 6, God instructed the Jews to do a number of unusual things. Number of unusual things. And by the way, none of which had any military value. What was the instruction God gave? It says, march around the walls once a day for six days. March with the Ark of the Covenant. Put seven priests in front of the Ark. And on the seventh day, march around Jericho seven times. Have the priests blow ram's horn as they march. And on the seventh time around, on the seventh day, have the people shout. And when the people shout, the walls will come down. And when the walls come down, enter the city and conquer it. God told them that walls would fall down. But they still had to do the marching. God did tell the walls would come down, but they still had to do the marching. In fact, God said he was going to give them the city, 
And this is what God said to Joshua even before he gave him the plan. Note the past tense. God says, I have delivered into your hands, Joshua. Not I will deliver. I have delivered. You know, when God speaks of Jericho as having already been defeated. That's a key point, people. You know, what is God actually telling there? It's a done deal, my son. Those walls are coming down and it's just a matter of time. The walls are coming down, it's just a matter of time. And so are the walls in your life. So are the walls in your family, in your marriages. And all that stands as an obstacle in your life, those walls are coming down, people, today in the name of the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, but now that shouldn't surprise any one of us who believes in God. You know, people, in a real sense, in a real sense, the battle was over before it started. What do I mean by what I said? The battle was over before it was started. You know why? Because God put himself in the middle of the battle plan. Because putting the ark out front was like God saying, I am going to lead this parade. And all normal military options are now off the table. It's people plus God. Or rather I can say, it is God plus people. And then spears and armors don't matter at all in a time like this. Doesn't matter when God is in the equation. But I want us all to notice this morning the defensive posture of Jericho. Yes, the defensive posture of Jericho. In fact, Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. Joshua 6, 1 and 2 records that this was a demonstration of the fear what happened. What does the Bible say? Joshua 6, 1 and 2. It says, now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. Yes, yes. Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your very hands, its kings and the mighty men of valor. I have a question this morning to ask us. What do people do when they are afraid? What do people do when they are afraid? Simple. They build walls around themselves. They build walls around themselves. Some literal and some figurative. Yes, people build walls. Look up to your screen for this image. This is the great Jericho walls, the fortified city. Can you see the greatness of the wall? Look to the another image. This talks about dealing with the walls. What were they actually dealing there? The walls. And I say today in our personal lives, even in our relationships, we are dealing with walls. Yes, today we are dealing with walls in our lives. Walls that cannot be penetrated by the methods of the world. The Bible tells us that they shut the gates for the fear of people. And this happened before the marching ever began. Yes, this happened even before the marching began. And you know, Although the people of Jericho did not know it, they were defeated before the walls ever fell. The people of Jericho did not know that, but actually they were defeated even before the walls ever fell. You know, they lost the battle. And why they lost the battle? When God got involved, they lost the battle. It was God who made all the difference at Jericho. You know, those high walls were no match for the Almighty God. And I believe God could have said, sit calm, don't do anything. I'll knock over the walls and destroy the city myself. Is there any problem with you? Certainly not, sir. <laughs> Certainly not. Why would I have a problem, God, if you're going to knock the walls down for me? And God is, in fact, fully able to work with or without human means. But that's not the normal plan of God. In fact, God loves to use people to accomplish his purposes. Know this. God loves to use people to accomplish his purposes. So people, even though God had caused the walls to come down, the people still had to march. They still had to shout. And when the walls fall, uh, fell down, they still had to take the city, fighting house to house. People had their part in this victory. They had to fight. They had to march. They had to take the city, fighting house to house. And no wonder the writer of Hebrews is making this point, that by faith, the walls fell down. And how do we know it's by faith? It was because it was people of God who put their faith into practice. 
Faith is always active, people. Faith is never passive. Faith is always in action. You know, and by marching around the city day after day, their shouts matured through their obedience. Marching around that city day after day, their shouts matured through their obedience. Isn't that beautiful, people? That's a walk of faith that God has called us. And you may ask me, what is faith, Pastor, then? You know, I believe faith means taking a step of faith, however small, however small, however unsure of yourself you may be, but taking a step of faith. And I believe in the light, in that light, we can understand the story much better with more clarity. You know, when these people were marching around, it was nothing but acting or the belief part. And when they took that little step of faith, God honored it. And the walls of Jericho fell to the ground. And that was the little step of faith, the baby steps of faith. And God honored that faith. In, in my walk with the Lord, one of the things I've understood that God often let us, or rather allows us to struggle and sweat. Yes, he's a good father. <laughs> he allows us to struggle and sweat. You know why? So that we can learn to trust in him at a deeper level than ever before. And when God wants to do something big, he starts with something very small. Because then he can show his power in us in a mighty way. Yes, and that's the beauty of our Lord. In interesting to know this. You know, the real battle of Jericho was not with the Canaanites. What are you saying, Pastor? Yes, the real battle of Jericho was not with the Canaanites. The real battle was in the hearts of the people. I'm talking a life-changing truth here. Listen, listen. The real battle of Jericho was not with the Canaanites, but the real battle was in the hearts of the people. And even today, the real battle is in the heart of the people. Whatever battle you're facing is not the real battle, but the real battle is in the hearts of people. And what is that? Would they believe what God has said? Would they believe what God has said? Would they do what seemed absurd from a human point of view in order to see the God who does the impossible? Would they believe God? And that is, that is the test today. That's the real battle. So talking about the life application today, how will we face and conquer our own walls of impossibility? And where do we find that faith? Because we know from Hebrews 12 too that he is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the author and he is the finisher of our faith. So we look to him. So let's apply this truth with these three questions that I'm about to say. The, num the very first question, is there a Jericho that you face in your life? Is there a Jericho that you face in your life? Is there some wall that seems to stand as an imposing obstacle before you? And are you willing to keep walking in faith even though it feels like you aren't accomplishing anything. I, w I believe somebody needs to hear this. Are you willing to keep walking in faith even though it feels like you aren't accomplishing anything? Listen carefully what I'm about to say. At the beginning of Israel's conquest of Canaan, they were learning a very important lesson that we also need to learn it. What is that, you may ask me, Pastor? An uh, important lesson they were learning right in the beginning. And what's that lesson which we need to learn even today? What is that? Very simple. God can be trusted. God can be trusted. Because God knows what is He doing. So keep your eyes on Him. And you know when Jesus leads the way, the wall must come tumbling down. And you need to just follow Him wherever He leads you. And people, as we battle the spiritual stronghold in us and around us, we will find that we fight from victory. And, 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 and I, I want us all to know that when we are confronted by fear, which is aimed at stopping the advance of the kingdom of God, we then must access the power of God through our obedience. Yes, how do we access the power of God? Simple, through your obedience. And obedience is a sign of whether our worship is authentic. Yes, obedience, in fact, is a sign whether our worship is authentic. Talking about victory, people, we may have the victory in Christ, but we only will be victorious against the spiritual strongholds if we fight by God's plan and God's strategy. You know why? Because success, yes, success is dependent upon obedience, and we access the power of God through obedience. 
And I believe, very important, we must acquire a different spirit than the spirit of the world. You know, why do I say so? Because the spirit that guided the Israelites was completely opposite of the spirit of the people of Jericho. Yes, you need to know who you are. You need, you, need, you need to also know what you have. And a major weapon in a spiritual arsenal is to follow the way of the spirit and not the spirit of the world. So in the closing, let me ask us two questions as I close. What is the Jerichos in your life? And are you letting God conquer your Jerichos for you? What is the Jericho in your life today? And are you letting God conquer your Jerichos? What is your battle of Jericho today? You know, church, we need to understand that it is the power of God that is at work in us today. The power in our life is not our intelligence or talent or skill, but it is purely of God. So we must obey Him. We must walk on the straight lines and around circles. And that walk is not always easy, people. Mind you, that walk that God is calling us is not easy. You know why? Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, we walk by faith and not by sight. And there is so much that happens in our lives that we don't understand. So many things happen in our life we don't understand. And people, please don't spiritualize everything. There are some people who want to spiritualize everything and want to understand everything. Not possible. Do you think that just walking around the Jericho made sense to those Israelites? I want you to think on this. Just walking around the Jericho walls made sense to the Israelites? No, but they had to keep on walking. They had to keep on believing that God was at work. And so do we in our lives even today. Yes, we keep on walking. I think, why was it important for the Israelites to walk around the city of Jericho? Why was it important when they walked around the city? Simple, it showed faith in God. It showed faith in God. And when we keep on walking people, in this life, we show our faith in God. But there are certain people who say, you know, Pastor, uh, you, uh, we are not an army like Israel. We are small, we have limited resources. <laughs> I believe Paul would say, and this, and this puts us in a perfect position to glorify God. What Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. You know what Paul says there? He says, and, he's, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities than the, the, uh, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And he says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reapproaches, in needs, in persecution, in distresses, for Christ's sake. You know why? For when I am weak, then I am strong. When I am weak, then I am strong. You know, beloved, God works in weakness so that we can know then that the power is from Him. You know why? Because the battle still belongs to the Lord. The battle still belongs to the Lord. So our job then is very simple. What is that? We walk. We are willing to follow God to the very best of our abilities. And we do is just show up and walk. And God is still the commander of the armies of Israel. And he still makes the wall fall down even today. He's the same unchanging God. But people, we have to keep walking. We have to keep walking by faith. And God time and again comes to us and, and reminds us to be strong and courageous because he's always with us. And because he's always with us, we got to keep walking and keep remembering the battle belongs to the Lord. Yes, the battle belongs to the Lord. So in the conclusion, what is the test today that we face as we go to trials of life and temptation and various battles? What is that test? Simple. The test is, can God be trusted? Can the good Lord be trusted? For the battle belongs to the Lord. Look up to the final screen. This summarizes the entire message what I spoke. What is that? It says, let go and let God. The battle is the Lord's. Let go and let God. For the battle is the Lord's. Come on, stand up with me wherever your respective homes. Let's take a moment of prayer. Let's thank the Lord for this morning, for this word. Thank you, Father, for helping us understand that the battle is the Lord's. And we don't fight for victory, people. We fight from victory. And God, thank you. Thank you, God, that we don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. And Lord, 
we may still face the different tests in our lives and as we go to testing moments and challenges but God the test is can God you be trusted and we believe you God Lord we may not understand all that is happening in our lives but we still want to walk the walk of faith and believe because you are with us and and we want to walk by faith doing what you have called us to do God knowing that victory is ours because you are with us and and may the walls in our lives in our marriages in, in, in every facet of life that stands as a hindrance will come tumbling down as we walk by faith so this morning thank you God for remi reminding us the battle is the Lord and Lord, we need to pass the test. The real battle was in the hearts of the people, Lord. And we understand today, God, and we believe, God, that you can be trusted. So this morning, help us as church. We give you all glory in Jesus' name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, I want you to know that the battle is the Lord's. And all that you and I need to know is pass the test. What's that? God can be trusted. Keep walking. Keep believing because those walls are coming down. God bless you.